Hi and welcome to the Adam Sharp channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam and in this screencast we're going to uh, check out some of the new features of the Objective-C language uh, in the iOS 7 framework. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the modules. Uh, modules is a very big thing that has been uh, uh, basically introduced in the, in the new objective c language uh, we are all familiar with with the import statements what import actually does is that when you compile the program uh, it it replaces whatever you're importing those header files with the actual files the actual code in those files okay uh, and it does that and of course if those have a different dependency on some other imports then those are injected at runtime also um, there is a much better way now, uh, you can say modules, because now they are pre-compiled. The first thing, uh, and I'm using iOS 7 as you can see, and this is Xcode uh, 5. And Xcode 5, in Xcode 5, yeah, the modules are enabled by default. But if you uh, want to see where you enable the modules, then you can simply search for modules. And in the Apple LLVM 5.0 language modules, you can see the enable modules is yes, and link frameworks automatically is yes. Now, when we, when I talk about link frameworks, we are all familiar with this, right? If you want to use uh, some other library of uh, uh, the uh, basically the framework, let's say iAds libra library, then what do you have to do? I mean, you had to go over there, you have to search, or link the framework, iads, or whatever it's called, iad framework, right? And then you have to then use it, basically, right? You have to import the library and all that stuff. Well, you don't have to do that anymore because with modules, uh, you can simply say import iad, and that's it, you are done. So this is automatically going to link the library, uh, add the framework, and it's going to add all the corresponding libraries that are in the IAD. Now you can always say that uh, the lab that you can always import the uh, library that you want. You can see the UI kit, the UI image view, and all that stuff. So you can always import the, the, the class of the library, the headers that you actually want. Okay. And that's it. Now, if you're running iOS, if you're targeting iOS 7, the good thing is that uh, all of these imports that are old or classic C imports or C++ imports, they will automatically be converted into the at import, which is the part of the modern Objective-C language. Okay, so that is one of the things that they introduce module is actually a huge part of the modern modern Objective C, which is the iOS 7 framework, and um, it's a better idea. I mean, it's, it will be much better if you're creating the projects in Xcode 5, iOS 7, then start using modules. You will see that the pre-compiling, the compiling of the program, as well as the running of the program, will actually uh, improve by using the modules. Okay. The other thing that they introduce is the instant type. Now, let me give you an example. If you have NS, uh, NS uh, dictionary, and you just say dictionary over here, and you will say NS array, and then, uh, you know, whatever, the array with objects or anything. One of the things that you note over here is that the return type has been changed to instance type. And here is it, here it is, the instant type, right? Now, if you have been using 4.6 Xcode or old Xcode, uh, you will see that this type is not instant type uh, in that. It's actually ID that is being returned. And the problem, let's say if I type something like this array with objects and I, uh, you know, I pass in whatever. So in this case, uh, you can see that there, it's complaining right now well, it's complaining like about the, you know, dictionary, but it's also saying that the um, the array with object is uh, is going to return basically an instant type, which which is basically an array, okay? And you, what you're doing, I mean, if you have been running this in 4.6, then you will you will note that um, that it will compile, uh, it will compile just fine, and you can actually call the uh, you know the dictionary uh, and the count 
method on it because uh, it's a dynamic type and it simply invokes that particular count method since it's available on the dictionary. So it, it doesn't give you any sort of a warning or an error that, hey, uh, you know, the NS array array with object, is, it is going to return you an NS array and not actually NS dictionary. But now it's actually giving you a warning. Let me see if I can go over here. Here we go, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so here we go, it's the incompatible pointer type initializing NS dictionary with an expression of type NS array. We simply say that, hey, when you call NS array array with object, it's going to return you an NS array and you're assigning it to an NS dictionary. So you might be doing something wrong over there. Now, if you, of course, compile this in 4.6x code, this, is, uh, this error or this warning will never occur because it's returning ID. If I go over there and jump to definition, you will see that now all of these are returning instance type, which is the correct type. It will know the correct type that you want based on the class, based on the instance, and it's going to return the correct type. All right. So this is pretty cool thing. Uh, of course, instance type can only be used as a return type. Uh, you cannot pass around instance type. Um, and so start using that if you have a method you know, uh, in the object initializer, if you subclass and you are uh, uh, overriding the uh, initializers, you can return the instance type over there also. Um, NSArray has uh, added, and this is another change. And so if you have an NSArray, so if I say array, NSArray, array, simple array and then uh, we are all familiar with the last object method which actually gives you the last object of the NS array but now there is another one it's called the first object so this is a very good way to find out that if your array has an index of uh, like if it contains any elements or not because most of the time we try to uh, access the array and the array uh, is empty and then of course uh, the message or the uh, error is uh, thrown saying that the index of er array, whatever the array name is, it does not exist. So now with the first object uh, property available to you, you can uh, make sure that the first object is actually available for the NS array. Um, apart from that, there is a uh, another great uh, which I, I won't cover in detail over here, but it is the NS progress, and NS progress is going to, yeah, it's, it's basically a class, and it's going to give you the progress. It's going to find some delegate methods also. It's going to give you the progress of individual tasks or the combined tasks that you are uh, trying to run. Uh, we're going to take a look at NS progress later in a separate uh, tutorial, in a separate screencast, uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, and that's it. Uh, I hope you like this video and stay tuned for more. Thank you very much.